Deb, hi. Hi, Simon. Good to see you. And you? Uh, Deb, you're a uh, nurse consultant. What is a nurse consultant? Let's uh, let's start from the very basics. I think that's a very good question because I think it varies from job to job, to be honest. It does. Yeah. Um, for me, so I'm a nurse consultant in allergy and asthma. So I spend about 50, 60 percent of my time doing food allergy and the rest looking after children with asthma. Um, so I have... I have clinics, so just the same as a medical consultant, so children will be referred in to either the two medical consultants or myself, and they'll just be allocated to one of the three of us. Um, and then the, we have a CNS team who see sort of follow-up patients and the more more straightforward patients. So I get the more difficult end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I get the consultant responsibility, um, but I also have a really nice remit um, for service development and things like that, so I can change things. I can experiment and do things differently, which is quite good fun. That sounds great. I get yeah, bored quite quickly, yeah. um, <laughs> so it's always good. So you might have heard about the um, allergy testing clinic we ran in the pandemic from a, a mobile um, treatment vehicle in a car park. That was good fun. How did that, how did that go? That was great. It was really successful. Um, actually, I think it's probably a model for the future. I think getting things out of the hospital is really important. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. And also, you know, to be able to put things as as much as we possibly can, you know, what we call in the community or in primary care, you know, not just in the GP surgery, but in community pharmacists and so on, you know, as close as where people live, the better and get, you know, keep them, stop them from having to go into hospital. Nobody wants to wait that long anyway, do they? But uh, No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. People wait a long time to come to hospital appointments. So we can you know, take it to them in a different way. I think I think that is the way forward. And the other advantage of going out into the community is that we can take primary care practitioners with us and we can upskill them, for want of a better word, and, you know, spread the word, spread the message and improve allergy care that way. So when somebody is then referred to you, let's say, uh, it, it, with, just with children, you say? Just children, yeah. Just children. So a Under child 60. to refer to you um refer to you their parent comes in what the, what's the kind of uh, just for asthma now because the connection between asthma and allergies is very close as well isn't it yeah absolutely if you have got well asthma at all but certainly if it's poorly controlled then you're more at risk of having a more severe reaction to your food allergy so it's really paramount that you keep your asthma under control and I think that's one of the things that people leave in the background a little bit, don't they? Because they worry about, you know, anaphylaxis to peanut or sesame or whatever it is, but they don't actually think that asthma can be severe. It's a, more of a mm -hmm. burden or an irritant, but actually it's really, it can be life-threatening. So in, it, in so when, itself. So when somebody comes in to see you, let's say for a, 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 an asthma appointment just for their asthma, you wouldn't necessarily just treat that asthma in the same way as you wouldn't just look at their, uh, their, uh, their allergy. No, when you're taking a history from a patient, so say we have an asthma, a child with asthma in front of us, we're going to ask about their own medical history. So, you know, have they got a food allergy, um, which presumably they have in some cases? Um, have they got eczema? Have they got hay fever? What's their asthma control like? And what are their, because it's all part of the same spectrum of atopic disease. So we want to know all about those conditions and what they're taking. So that is a common question, and everyone would be asked that. So if a child has got asthma, What's the chances that they would have an allergy and vice versa? If somebody's got, a, you know, a child's got an allergy, would they necessarily have a asthma as well? No, no, I'm, I'm not sure of the figures off the top of my head, but certainly if you've got a food allergy, there's a higher risk of you having asthma. So a certain percentage of our patients will have asthma as well. And in the children in our clinic, that's probably about 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent. Um, if you do it the other way around and you're in an asthma clinic asking about food allergy, the number will be less. So a minority of them will, will have a food allergy as well, but they're definitely there. It's common enough for us to be looking for it. But it's important to look at both, not rather than in isolation. Yes, if we're seeing a food allergic patient, we're going to ask what they're on for their asthma, what their symptoms are. So, for example, we might get them to fill in the asthma control test. We might do some spirometry if there's any suggestion that things are anything but perfectly controlled. Um, maybe do some pheno testing as well. So put together a whole pattern of the child's symptoms and then make sure they're on the right treatment. And certainly we will change their asthma treatment if we don't think it's correct for that child. That's so very you mentioned easy to a, do. A number of, 
I've mentioned a couple of tests there. What what what's a what's a pheno test? So a pheno test is um it's a test that you would you would do to measure someone's exhaled nitric oxide level. So nitric oxide is a gas which is produced by inflamed cells essentially. So if you have poorly controlled asthma and you blow into the pheno machine and you have a number which is high then you know that there's some inflammation in that airway so often that is in the chest but it could be in the um, you know the nasal cavity as well so it could be in the, the upper airway so you do have to, to be a bit discerning to work out what's going on some people do get treated for asthma when actually they've got rhinitis so you can't just rely on the numbers obviously you have to look at the patient as a whole mm -hmm. but it's quite a simple test it takes a couple of minutes so it's, it's and it's really portable so that's good so you can take that out with you I can see you've got quite a busy office now. So sorry about that. Bit, well, no, it's quite all right. We're not quite forgiving the people working uh, when you're in a place of work. So you know you got people coming and going. Um, so w at what age do you? Is it sixteen? Did you say that you you see children? Yeah, I see them from birth to sixteen. Right, um, and we were talking earlier about your your you've got a project at the moment starting. Is it? today you said? It started in, yesterday. In yesterday. So yeah this is a really exciting project. So this is part of taking asthma into the community and of course if it works for asthma it will work for food allergy. So we have to do the more common thing first Keep an eye on it. Yeah. to get everyone on our side. Um, so quite a, f a fair number of people with asthma live quite complex lives and may, might have complicated family lives which means that they may not have the money to come to a hospital appointment. Um, it, they may struggle to get there because it could be two or three buses away, etc. They might have lots mm. of children. Mm. Um, so we are trying to take the asthma clinics out to the patient. So we want to go to their area so that they can just come out of their house and walk down the street and be seen and they can have a proper review with all of the testing. So they can have the pheno test, they can have a lung function test, they can have a, a skin prick test, they can have all of that done. And we're running them from children's centres. So these are ah. dotted around our entire region. So I cover um, Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloucestershire. So we're, we're moving around around the area. So we have a clinic all day on a Tuesday and all day on a Thursday until the end of March. And the other thing is that any GP can refer in, any practice nurse or any school nurse. So it's really easy. People fill in a single form. It comes through to me and and someone books them in. So it's, it's really straightforward. Um, and hopefully we can improve their asthma care more quickly than them sitting on a long waiting list to come to the hospital. Yes, I mean the hospitals are scary places as well. You don't never yeah. want to go there. <laughs> no, that's true. We get very used to them, don't we? Well, I do. Yeah. But yeah. we forget what it's like. You know, people come to their appointment mm -hmm. and they've been worrying about it for a week, and they've got a list yes. of questions, and they have yeah. no idea what you're going to do or what you're going to talk about. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So yeah, as much of it, particularly for children, and if it's you know it's a familiar environment. And uh, what, what do you think that would, might be the lessons that you could learn uh, about having a similar sort of service for uh, for allergies? I think if we can improve patient outcomes in terms of their asthma management, I think that's the first step. So we want to make a difference to people. And of course, with something as common as asthma, that's quite hard to prove, isn't it? Because you can't run an initiative for six months, two days a week and expect to improve the care of children for the whole of asthma. Um, so the number you have to look at people and see how the individual has improved rather than looking at the whole of the, the region and seeing what what people you know what's happened to admissions so we are sending out feedback surveys to anyone that comes to our clinic um, and we will be looking at what happens to them over the course of the next six months to a year in terms of you know do they suddenly become better controlled or or does it tail off again so those kind of things with food allergy I think it, it could be an even more simple model because we get quite a lot of young children with us with an egg allergy or a nut allergy. Um, and I know it varies from centre to centre, but if you live around here, we would see you at the point of diagnosis. We might not see you for two or three years again. But if we can see people in the community, we'll see them quickly. So we can talk about things like allergy prevention for babies. They haven't waited eight months to be seen. They're still a baby when we see them. So we can get peanuts in. We can get all those foods that they're avoiding. 
And a lot of patients will come to clinic and say, well, I had a reaction to peanuts. My GP told me not to have any nuts until I was seen and tested. And of course, it doesn't really work like that, does it? Because A, we don't really do screening testing because of the number of false positives. And B, they've waited eight months and not touched those foods. So during that time, they could have become allergic. So if we can get into the community, we can. that's one thing we can certainly help with. Um, and it, I think it just becomes less scary if you're not coming yeah. up to the hospital. You know, it's more of a, yeah, some of the rooms yeah. we've used, are, they've got sofas in, they haven't got couches in. You can sit and have a proper chat. Um, I think it just makes a difference. Yeah, it does. It does indeed. Uh, so how, you, the, uh, how long are you running the asthma clinic for then? Is it is it, is it more of a trial or? Uh, yeah, it... It, well, it's funded by um, some project money until the end of March. And then I think after that, if we can demonstrate that it's made a difference, whatever that difference might be, um, then hopefully we can get some more funding and secure it. What I would quite like to do would be to have a hub of community asthma nurses, because at the moment, I think GPs are GP nurses who do most of the asthma care are a little bit scared of children. There aren't lots of people who are skilled in paediatric asthma management out there. So it's, you know, you don't get the same service. It's a postcode lottery, isn't it, really? So if we can have a revolving pod of nurses that move around surgeries or, or have a diagnostic hub, I think that will make a difference. Um, and have it in, in built that measurement of looking at them at the outcomes there, you, you, you're looking at how potentially allergies could be managed in a similar sort of service. Exactly. And I think by making by putting allergy in the hospital, we've also de-skilled everyone, haven't we, in the community? Because people are now terrified. If a child comes with an egg allergy, the GP refers them straight away. But actually, I don't think it should be like that. I think people should be given the tools to manage that. And I definitely think that that's possible. So it's a long term, big project, but that's yeah. the way no, we're I going. Mean, it's, that's certainly, you know, certainly true from um, um, calls for help. You know, people just don't want to wait that long. Yeah, and why would you? you? Know, they don't, you're they worried. don't want to. Yeah, yeah, they are very worried, and uh, and not necessarily getting that support that they need from um, the GP. It's it's you know, as you quite rightly say, it's just you know, that somebody presents themselves to the GP, explains the issue, um, diagnosed with potential allergy, and then off you go to get you know a referral. To the allergy clinic in the hospital and you're waiting for a very long time and in the uh, uh, and in that kind of time of waiting which could be many months you know you're kind of worrying and, and yeah almost left without what's need that uh, oh, yeah uh, UK doing our best to kind of bridge that well you're uh, doing a great job that. yeah <laughs> thank you um but Nonetheless, you know, they're not getting seen by, uh, you know, another healthcare professional for that long. No. And of course, often, most of the time, probably GPs are not giving out, you know, allergy action plans as well. So you can download this, those, don't you? You know that from the BSACI yeah, we've got website. One on, got one on our website. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. But not everyone knows that and not all GPs do. So you can be left without a clear plan of what to do. And it's important for schools, nurseries, childminders as well, isn't it? So the sooner you're seen, the better, I think. With the Asper Clinic, I've been taking practice nurses with me as well so that we, hopefully we can upskill people that way. So that's good. Oh, that's okay. So that's we okay. could do the same with allergy. We could have a GP or whoever's interested could come. Then yeah. we shall we shall keep a close eye on <laughs> uh, developments and wish you well with, with that. Um, certainly, you know, take it as a given that uh, Anaflex UK will provide you as much support or um, you know help as, as we possibly can. Um, but in the meantime, you know, best of luck to you and keep us updated on uh, on progress. I definitely will. Thank you, Thank Simon. Thank you very much. Great to speak to you. Bye. Bye.